Hey everybody, welcome to Single Track. My name is Will, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty hot topic in the world of mountain biking, and that, my friends, is fork offset. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about what the heck fork offset actually is. And then we're gonna go into some detail about what role it plays in modern mountain bike geometry. Finally, I'll be talking about my experience with back-to-back -back testing different fork offsets and how they affect handling on the trail. Now, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button to make sure you get notified of all the videos we have coming your way in the near future. Right, so before I go into detail about the results of the fork offset experiment, let's take a look at some of the key terms that are gonna help explain things through this video. The first one is the steering axis. And when we're talking about front end handling on a mountain bike, the steering axis is one of the most important factors. Really though, the steering axis is just a fancy way of saying head angle. To picture this, imagine a straight line shooting out of the head tube and going all the way down to the ground. That right there is your steering axis, otherwise known as head angle. In general, we'll find longer travel enduro bikes and downhill bikes will have a slacker head tube angle, somewhere in the realm of 60 to 65 degrees. In comparison, shorter travel trail bikes and cross-country hardtails will use a steeper head angle, somewhere around 65 to 70 degrees. There's of course a bit of variance in there, but to generalize, the slacker the head tube angle, the more descending oriented the bike is. The second term is fork offset, and this is basically how far forward the front hub is offset from the rest of the fork. Now, remember that steering axis we were talking about before, that straight line that goes all the way to the ground? Now imagine a secondary parallel straight line that runs just in front of that, but intersects the axle of the front hub. Now the distance between those two lines is the fork offset. The third and final term is trail. Now you remember the steering axis we were talking about before? You'll notice that the steering axis hits the ground somewhere in front of the front wheel. Now the distance between where it hits the ground and the tire contact patch is called trail. Essentially what we're measuring there is how far the front wheel trails behind the steering axis. To generalize again, the more trail you have, the more stable the steering will be. And this is because of a mysterious force called the caster effect. This is essentially the front wheel's ability to self-correct after it's been knocked offline. And you'll notice this if you're riding along on the road without your hands on the handlebar, that rather than wiggling all over the place, the front wheel generally stays pointed straight ahead. This is the caster effect at play. So the more trail that we have, the stronger the caster effect is, and in general, the more stable that front end steering will be. Now the reason I wanted to explain the steering axis and fork offset is that both of them will influence how much trail your bike has. A slacker head angle will increase the amount of trail, whereas a steeper head angle will decrease the amount of trail. As for fork offset, Assuming that the head angle stays the same, a shorter fork offset will actually increase the amount of trail, whereas a longer fork offset will decrease the amount of trail. This is because offset will change where the tire contact patch is and therefore will either bring it closer or further away from the steering axis. Now for this video, we're gonna be talking exclusively about offsets for 29er forks from Fox and RockShox. And that's predominantly because those are the forks that I've been testing for the past six months, but also to try and keep things relatively simple. In recent years, most 29er forks have used a 51 mm offset. Over the last 18 months though, Fox and RockShox have offered up a shorter offset option in their 29er forks. For RockShox, that's a 42 mm offset, and for Fox, like we have here, a 44 mm offset. Right, so now we know what those terms are, it's time to talk about this Santa Cruz Blur and some of the testing I've been doing on it. So this bike has been built up on the burlier side of things, and that includes a 120 mm Fox 34 step cast fork on the front. Now this is the longest travel fork you can fit on this frame, and if you've seen my review of the Blur already, you'll note that I really, really like it. This is a whole lot of fun to ride. To begin with, I started riding with this fork here. This is the 44 mm offset. Then I swapped it for this fork here. This is an identical fork. This is a Fox 34 step cast in the factory series model. So it has the same chassis, the same Evol air spring, the same Fit4 damper. Everything is exactly the same except for the offset. This is a 51 mm offset fork. Now with these forks, I did some repeated back-to-back -back testing. I'd ride exactly the same loop with exactly the same settings to make sure that I was able to isolate the performance differences between the 51 mm offset and the 44 mm offset. Now in my experience, the difference between the two is fairly subtle. It's certainly not as dramatic as some brands make it out to be, but the differences are still there. 
With the 51mm offset, the steering is a little lighter and easier to thread around really tight, twisty corners. I noticed this on some of my local XC trails, which have a lot of uphill switchbacks and flat, tight, low speed corners. Here I found the 51mm fork to be more intuitive and more natural to get around those tighter bends. And overall, it feels like the steering radius is just a little bit tighter, which gives it a really nice, nimble, agile feel on the trail. The lighter steering did mean the blur was a little less stable on the rougher descents though. And that's because of the reduced caster effect. So the front wheel is less likely to self-correct after it's been knocked offline. I also noticed that the front wheel could wiggle a little bit on long high speed berms. And if I was really pushing it, it could be pushed into oversteer as well. When I swapped to the 44 millimeter offset, the blur just felt calmer and steadier overall. In those same high speed corners, it tracked better and it just had a more sure footed feel. When I was loading up the bike into a berm, I found less need to make micro corrections to the steering and it just stuck better. The flip side of this stability though, is that the blur takes a bit more work on the tight and twisty trails, particularly at lower speeds. I found in order to get the bike around those sharper turns, you really need to lean it over rather than trying to steer with the handlebar. In that regard, I was really glad to have this dropper post as well as the wide bars and short stem, which really helped to crank the bike over to make it all the way through those sharp turns. I'd say in general, you do need to ride more aggressively with the shorter 44 millimeter offset. This can be a little bit fatiguing on longer cross country rides. Conversely though, I did find the 44 millimeter offset easier to pilot down really rough, long, fast descents where it would hold its line more confidently. And if I was tired, this was particularly beneficial. Now I will reiterate that the difference between the two fork offsets isn't huge. I was able to get used to each one within a ride or two, and I certainly wouldn't say that one is right and one is wrong. Really, they just have different characteristics that are gonna suit different riders better, and also different bikes and terrain better too. In my experience, changing fork offset is more about fine tuning the front end handling of your bike. If you want a bit more stability, you could look at fitting a shorter fork offset. If you want to speed up the handling though, a longer offset may be the way to go. Also worth bearing in mind is your stem length and your bar width, two things that will change the amount of leverage you have over the front wheel of the bike. For example, if you're looking at going to a shorter fork offset, you may want to consider going to a slightly shorter stem, possibly some wider handlebars to increase your leverage over the front wheel and speed that steering back up again. However, if your bike is already a bit short, you may not want to fit a shorter stem. Therefore, a short fork offset may not be an ideal fit for your bike. As for me, after testing both fork offsets, I prefer the 44 mm offset on the Blur. This is, after all, a bike that wants to be ridden pretty hard and fast, and with a trail-oriented cockpit, the burlier build kit, that short 44mm offset and the extra stability it brings is a welcome addition to this bike. Although it's not quite as easy to pilot through the tight and twisty stuff, particularly at lower speeds, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make for the extra stability and confidence you get when bombing down hills, particularly on rough terrain. So there you go, that's my experience of testing different fork offsets on the front of this Santa Cruz Blur. Now if you want to read more about fork offset and the effect that it has on the trail, make sure you jump on singletrackworld.com and check out my feature about fork offset and testing this bike with the 44 and 51 millimeter offset. If you've got any experience yourself with testing different fork offsets, we'd love to hear from you. Likewise, if you've got any comments or questions for me, make sure you drop them into the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, give us a thumbs up for the video and stay tuned for plenty more videos coming your way. We'll see you next time, guys. Toodaloo.